What's up, Liron here, and did you know that watercolor painting isn't as hard as people make it out to be? Now, of course, some mistakes cannot be corrected, but like 90% of mistakes, if you're present and you notice while you're painting that you make them, you can fix them. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can think you made a mistake of going too dark, and if you catch that on time and you use that water down method, you'll be able to fix it like that. So let's get started. So let me show you what I mean by this watered down method. I'm gonna first demonstrate this on a random piece of paper, just so that you can see. So let's say I wanna put in a light background to kind of a still life subject, like this one I have here. So I'm gonna put, oops, I made a mistake, it's very dark. So here's the watered down method. I dip my brush in the well and I simply bring fresh water to it. And by moving it around, it will spread out and become lighter. Same as blending edges, you bring back water with a clean brush and you help the paint move, okay? Let me show you one more time. I have a wet brush, it's a clean brush and I move the paint with it. It's too dark, no problem, coming back with some water, spreading it out. Let me show it to you on another piece of paper because I know <laughs> People are very scared of this kind of thing. So let me show you once again, make sure we're on the same page. I'm gonna get a bunch of this phthalo blue that's extremely dark and very uh, easy to get too dark. So here we go, here it is. Maybe even mix it with some of this uh, um, quinacridone violet. See how dark this is? All I have to do is come back, clean the brush, come back with some water and it will spread out. And even for a color as staining as phthalo blue, it watered it down significantly. You can see that some base stayed. If I show it to you really up close and clean it up, but I was going for a real extreme now. See in the paint, some of it got absorbed of the original, but once you cover it up with a bit of paint, it's, no one's gonna notice, no one's gonna care. Okay, so this fear of going too dark uh, and ruining everything is really, there's nothing to worry about. So let me show it to you with this demonstration of a still life. And funny enough, sometimes I'll use it on purpose. So let's say I have a large background to cover and I don't want to spend time mixing. I'll just grab some paint and I don't care if it's thick and I'll just put it in like this and then I'll just use my water to disperse it around. See how that works? I'll actually use this as a technique. So now I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to this purple to neutralize it, because they're kind of opposites on the color wheel. And now I wanna add a lot more paint, because I need this to be darker. And I really went with a random color there. I didn't even have a solid plan for how I'm gonna paint this. Um, but I just wanna show you how non-issue it actually is, because it's something that so many people are scared of, going too dark, you know, no way back. Well, tactically, there are plenty of ways back, so to speak, and there are plenty of ways of correcting these mistakes, okay? Let me be more accurate. Let me put in some extra effort here. Because <laughs> sometimes I tend to be really inaccurate. I just enjoy it. I love the freedom of movement and spontaneity. But sometimes there are times to be a little more accurate. Now, I have a problem here. Because I have a lot of water on the left area, and it's gonna dry slower and that may lead to some backgrounds. So as you see me, I'm just cleaning the brush, wetting it on my paper towel, and just soaking back some of the excess moisture from different areas, okay? I don't even care about these sparkles, they're nice looking. Uh, but in any case, this is it for this side. Now let's work on the uh, table itself. Just a bit of yellow, it has to be really light because it has to look very burnt almost compared to the other elements here. I'm careful not to touch too much of the background because that'll make it really run off there. We don't want that. But I'm gonna mix it together with the pumpkin. Okay, so let's do that. And all I'm, I care about is avoiding the highlights, but to be quite frank, <laughs> the lightest highlight is quite yellow. So I'm gonna cover everything up. That's how we do it. Decisions on the fly. Strong paint spread it out with water, you see? Don't worry about getting too strong a paint. I'm trying to really show how this kind of carelessness almost going against uh, everything others talk about sometimes. And of course, many people propel this loose painting idea. I'm not the only one, but 
many times it seems like people are very tight with their painting. So I want to show you the really the opposite way. So now we can do some wet and wet, and why not if we have the chance? So I'm getting a bit of quinacridone rose and some uh, pyrrole scarlet here, and I'm just gonna inject these in. I want it to be a little warmer, so let's turn this into more of an orange color. Now the, the reference photo is a very vibrant orange, so it's gonna be very hard to replicate that kind of thing, but I'm just doing my best. And now this is just turning into a normal painting process. I may show you some more uh, later on and how to, you know, um, not worry too much about that kind of thing once this first wash dries. But for now, and I'm doing a lot of wet and wet. I actually have a wet and wet video planned out soon as well. But I think this will do for now. Now if you went too dark somewhere, you want to preserve more of a highlight, you just come back and you just lift it up, see? Once again, you just lift it back up. So for example, if I want this part of the pumpkin to have a, this highlight here, I just lift it back up. Same goes for this, all across, I can just lift it back up. Um, another one here, let's see. Yep, we're good. Uh, now we can do some wet and wet with greens on the stem, because I think it will look really nice. So let's do that kind of thing. I don't even know if it's really wet anymore, but it's kind of dry already, but that's fine. So a bit here to the left, and now it starts to get wet, so we'll get a nice little blend here. And let's neutralize this green with a bit of red. I want it to be less of a striking green, and move back into a lighter value. And we can now let this dry, see what happens, and come back and start adding some more details. So now that our pumpkin is dry, we can move on and I'm actually gonna work on the pumpkin first and then we'll consider darkening the background more. It is darker in the reference photo, so I will definitely consider it. Now, notice all of this strong, strong red I'm mixing here, see? Let me show it to you up close. It's a very, very strong red, okay? That's Pyrrol Scarlet, it's kind of cadmium-ish in its vibe. And whoops, I put this strong red here, which is actually fine, because that area is quite dark, you see? But if I want to fix it, as always, coming back with a bit of water and just blurring it out, blur blending out the edges, or simply charging it with water to make the paint disperse, okay? Now I want to add a bit of yellow on top of that, because the edges are quite orange, so let's let the yellow do its thing go like this, go like that, and all we have to do is leave these nice looking highlights in between the different parts of the pumpkin, okay? We have a highlight here, we have another strong, strong red shape around here, and as long as it reads well, that's fine. Now there is an even darker part of the pumpkin, so we're gonna use a bit more blue, actually, to mix it, so a bit more blue, and a bit red together. This is French Ultramarine. And just putting in a hint of it. See? Just a hint. Okay? And we're gonna do a very interpretive approach here. I'm not going to try and mimic everything I see perfectly, because I actually enjoy changing things around and moving things around. That's actually fun. Um, so let's do that kind of thing. I'm just gonna wet this area to keep it flowing. Gonna do one last of these like so, a bit of yellow around here, and now we're ready for the shadow. Now the shadow is much darker, I'm actually gonna use Carbazole Violet and some of the yellow, because it is quite a muted shadow, it's very gray. We'll put it in like that. Now it's important to be aware of the wet areas, okay? So this area is wet, this bottom of the pumpkin is wet, so we want to make sure to pay attention to that spot. Now I will blend the shadow, because it's very soft and blended in the reference photo. So kind of like this. See? Just light touches, and it moves. And then I'm going to charge back with a very dark value onto the basis of the pumpkin, because that's where it's the darkest. See? Like so. I can even extend it a bit to the shadow itself. If I want to. 
And if it's too dark, you can always come back with some water and help it move around. Okay, so we're manipulating the, pan the paint and you have to learn to do it. You will with time, so don't worry. You will learn how to manipulate the paint with time. Now a bit of red for the other edges of the pumpkin. There's one here. I actually like this red a lot. Let's put it in in more areas. Like so. Here as well, here. There's a very thin one here. And I do feel like I have to blend this into a stronger yellow. So let's do that kind of thing. Okay, like this, like this, like this. Now for the base, it's very green. I'm gonna use my undersea green because I think that'll work well as a muted green. Maybe mix it up with some of the red and orange to mute it down. And just go for it. This should be much, much darker. So here we go. There are some gaps because it has this beautiful rugged texture. And then we have a highlight here. And this part really reflects the red. So I'm gonna put in some red in here and some red in here. Notice how it reflects the red off of the actual body of the pumpkin. And we are pretty much done. Now it's just time to add the background. I'm gonna switch to my larger uh, Raphael brush and add that dark background. I'm gonna neutralize it more. So a bit of carbazole and a bit of yellow, good bit of yellow. Now I have to work really fast because the paint isn't moving as much, okay? So I'm gonna do this fast, as fast as I can. And we'll see what happens. And if it's too much, then I just go back with some water and tone it down. See, like I did here, I just tone it down. Moving alongside the pumpkin, helping the paint move. Like so, one side. Another side. And we are done. Done with this one. Beautiful sense of light and shadow, beautiful colors. I really like how the, let me show you up close. I really like how the red reflects on the stem here. And as always, I know you always want me to remove the tape. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sign this one off and I'm gonna remove the tape while it's still, uh, you know what, I'm gonna put it to dry just for a few moments, sign it, and then we'll remove the tape. So the painting is 99% dry. The flattening is what happens when you allow it some more time in the sun, but that's fine. Uh, by the way, I kind of blown up the highlights, these entire areas in the original reference should be a little more orange. So a bit too light, but that's fine. Still looks good and kind of falls into place. Let me show it to you without the tape. Um, this tape isn't the best. I switched uh, brands and I, uh, it's not as good. Sometimes there's some leaking with it, but as you can see overall, still a nice result. Still looks fairly good. Here it is up close. Hopefully you can see everything. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up. So this is it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you enjoyed seeing this one without the tape because I always forget, so apologies about that. But this time I remembered and I wanted to show you the full process. And again, you put the dark paint in and you just move it around with some water and it works out perfectly well. And then if you wanna darken, you come back with darker paint or you lift back some of the water and then you come back with darker paint. There's a lot of freedom within the somewhat one directional um, process of watercolor painting that will still work out and will still look beautiful and you can still correct like 95 probably percent of your mistakes. Well, maybe not 95, 90. That's a bit of an hyperbole. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop a like if you have and subscribe if you're new. And I just want to remind you that I will be in New York from the 1st till the 27th uh, of October. So if you want to do something like a private lesson, let me know. We can definitely set it up. Uh, actually very excited uh, to do that kind of thing. I haven't thought of organizing, it, it is a possibility to organize a meetup. I will have to consider that and if anyone's willing to help with making that happen, let me know as well. So thank you so much. I will talk to you again in another one real soon.